this point in time. How, how do we know it's 60% lethal? Oh, the Nipah virus has, has had epidemics, sporadic epidemics in, in uh, the, the belt around Africa and India, uh, Bangladesh, and it's between 60 and 80 percent lethal in the pockets where it comes out. It's not very transmissible like Ebola, so it, it kills 100 or 200 people and then burns out. But if they made it airborne, it would be different. Okay, so, so this is a virus that occurs in nature, but you just d detected it in... This database, okay. I, I, I detected cloning vectors with it, so they're manipulating it, which is n not allowed by biological treaties. So and that's a pretty scary scenario right there, that uh, the Wuhan lab that might have been the originator of the coronavirus is fooling around with something far more deadly. Yes. And they're obviously mums the word. Uh, Dr. Ebright, I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused. Um, you talked about, well, if we were doing gain of function on the current coronavirus, that'd be okay. That's not the indication I'm getting from Dr. Esfeld here. I think what really concerns me is, and I'm not saying that you're saying this is the justification, you're just saying the, the reality situation is we've got, we've got research centers, we've got scientists that are doing this gain of function research for two, I mean, very dangerous gain of function research, for two completely unnecessary reasons, because it's fundable and it's publishable. And I'll call those, you know, again, that's, so you got a little greed involved and you have hubris. Is that what you're saying? Uh, the research is performed because it's fast, easy, fundable, and publishable. In the academic research ecosystem, those are determinants of what research gets pursued. So I, I view that as a very corrupt research ecosystem. I mean, if, if, that's, if that is what is driving research, and very dangerous research, it's so that you can, get a, you can get a funding grant just to do something, I guess, for grins, and then you can publish it and get the uh, academic kudos for it. Matt, I'm sorry, I just find that sick. I would not use the term corrupt. I would not see any real difference between this than the activity of a hedge fund or the activity of a bank or a broker. Uh, the key point is, is that because of these incentives, self-regulation from within the community is insufficient. The scientific research community will follow the incentives. It will never effectively self-regulate on these issues. But for I, I, this reason, we for, for this reason we have regulations with force of law for vertebrate animals research and for human subjects research. We need regulations with force of law for gain of function research of concern. Well, I, mean, I think the difference, if it's a bank or hedge fund, I mean they're they're doing things for an economic incentive to produce something you know, to fund a manufacturing site or fund some kind of business. Again, th this is research that has, again, I I'm not hearing the benefit of this research. I'm just, There's I'm just a benefit to the seeing, researcher. And I'm, I'm seeing the risk, I'm seeing the danger. I'm not seeing the benefit other than what you're saying for the researcher itself to just get money, to do something that's dangerous, and to have, the, the, again, the academic kudos for being published. I don't know, I, I, maybe you don't like the word corrupt, it's completely useless. It has no benefit to society, it just has risk, just has danger. Um, I'm, I have no further, you know, Dr. Esfeld, I mean, do you disagree with that assessment? I think that all institutions follow their incentives, and I think that that set of incentives, fast, easy, fundable, and publishable, insofar as fundable and publishable are ways of curing heart disease and cancer and forestalling aging, those are all certainly fundable and publishable, perhaps not as fundable as we would like. Certainly research into defenses against the next pandemic is right now somewhat fundable. I wish it could be more fundable, but, but, the, but it's publishable. So right, what, it depends on what depends you're on talking what. about fundable and publishable have a beneficial reason. What I'm, what I'm hearing from the three of you witnesses, there's just not a benefit to this. There is, so one, one clarification. You mentioned on endemic human viruses like SARS-2, why do this? 
Well, if you want to predict the next variant that is going to arise anyway within a couple of months, one that already exists, then that's why researchers do things like deep mutational scanning on the, of the spike protein to look and see which ones of them might have a bit of an edge in terms of maintaining infection while evading immunity a little bit and is likely to be the next variant. That then lets us design the next vaccine against, that, against the variant and guess correctly. We have to do this with flu every year. Flu vaccines are terrible usually because we often guess wrong. So that kind of research can help improve our guess as to what is correct. But as soon as you do, as you make a change that would not occur in nature, <clears throat> then it becomes dangerous because that is something that a more pathogenic mutation could be inserted. Mm -hmm. And that becomes a problem and there's no justification for doing that because nature's not gonna come up with it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Marshall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you again to